Today on Vermont Master Anglers, we meet back up with Ryan Daly and Rob Ellis to target pre-spawn channel catfish. Just snaking them out. Rip it, and then you just flip that clutch forward and pick it right up and set it. Flip it, set it. Nice, first channel of the day. My name is Zachary McNaughton, and I am not a professional angler. I've been fishing for over 20 years, and the one thing that these years have taught me most is that I have a lot to learn. So let's meet some of Vermont's true master anglers, and together we'll discover some fishing techniques and explore the many species that this great state has to offer. We're out here today fishing channel catfish. Um, it's early June, springtime here. We've had a late spring. So we're out here targeting channel cats pre-spawn on these mud flats and these flooded timbers and these washed out banks. And we're fishing real shallow. We're anchored up in six or seven feet of water and we're casting into two, three, maybe four feet. So when you talk about pre-spawn catfish, what you're talking about is that water temperature that's about 60 to 70 degrees. Um, after 70 degrees is when they really go full spawn. Um, so that's that time when they're ramping up and they're really eating heavy. And is he off? Dead. We don't know. I don't know. I would say I just, yeah, just oh, yeah. oh, there he is. There you go. Snug him. You, uh, get that one right off. This feels like a better fish. Got him. That's a big fish. All right, beauty. Look at that. First big one of the day. What's the... I'll hold his head. Yep, yeah, right there. 30. Yeah. So we're anchored up out here. Um, easiest way to target these shallow fish. So what we're doing is we're coming in real quiet and we'll bring the boat in and I'll actually back the boat into these spots with the rack facing the area that we want to target. We're able to cover a very large spread. We're using two power pole shallow water anchors and we actually have a digger anchor, that's a fluke style, off the front to keep the nose from swaying around here because it is a little breezy today. For those of you who don't have shallow water anchors, you can always come in to your spot, drop your front anchor, allow it to set, and then position the tail end of your boat facing the area you want to target and then drop your rear anchor to lock yourself down. The rig we're using today is a Carolina rig. Uh, pretty simple. 30 pound leader. Your favorite circle hook. We stick to a smaller circle hook. You know, three to four aughts this time of year. Nice barrel swivel. It's a 110 pound swivel. Might be a little much, but it's what we got. Uh, a soft bead. And then a couple of slide sinkers, whatever your preferred slide sinker is, be it some eggs, no rolls. Uh, maybe a pyramid or a coin on a sink or slide. You know, in a lot of instances, people use a lighter leader than their main because they want it to be sacrificial. I think here you want to have a heavier leader than your main. We're using 20 pound main with 30 pound leader line for the abrasion resistance that you're going to find in these shallows around these timbers, these logs, these rocks. I would say also using a medium to medium heavy powered rod so you can really get the torque on these fish and keep them from driving up further into those timbers and those snags. Okay. So the bait we're using, we caught right here on Lake Champlain. Um, we're using alewives and we're using golden shiners. Uh, a native bait species and an invasive species um, and they work really, really well this time of year. And you want to keep your bait size small. We're using three-aught circle hooks and maybe pieces of bait about a half dollar in size. Um, right now, a big bait would be like a five-inch alewife, would be a whole bait. They're about the right size for a whole piece. I'll cut the tail off. So I'll just take my knife and I'll cut it a few times down the side. 
um, and help disperse that scent a little bit because catfish are a, a scent predator, especially in muddy, murky water like this. It's all about the scent, it's all about the taste. So these are airways, they're really soft in the body. We're just gonna hook them. I like to get it through the eye and get that goop going. And then right to the top of the skull. Just cause on that cast when you throw them, you know, a lot of times you'll lose your bait. So if you hook them through the head, they're much more likely to stay on. Once the rods are all cast out and put into position in the rack, we just sit back and wait for the first bite. If we don't have anything within 15 minutes, we'll move on to a new spot. When using spinning gear, we keep the drag all the way loose while it's in the rack. When the fish takes the bait, you tighten the drag, reel down, and set the hook. Got him. Might be the windish. Ah, that's, not, that's, 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 that's definitely not no little one. Camera. Good call, okay. buddy. Come here. Ooh. Beauty. Woo! Look at that beauty. Oh man. That's why we're out here. That's right. right. Beautiful Lake Champlain Channel <laughs> Cat. Blast. For those of you who don't have a boat at all, um, this is a great time of year to be fishing from shore because you don't have to a lot of times, and I know I always did it, when I fished from shore, I tried to bomb that bait out as far as I possibly could it, no matter what time of year or what I was doing. This is the time of year when you want to lob it right in front of you. Just a couple of feet. That's all you need. And there's, it's easily accessed and they're gonna be all over the place. If they're not sitting in a pocket, you know, in a section of flooded timber, they're cruising the flats to the next spot and you can catch them on the run. Oh, yeah. You want it back? Sure. There you go, get it. All right, not a bad little fish, huh? Sweet. <laughs> Within seconds of pulling That's up here, really. Right. That one over there. That don't sound like a game. <laughs> there you go, buddy. So you don't want to do it? Yeah, I'm sure. That could be a big fish. That was out in the middle of the flats. Whoa! This is a lighter rod, isn't it? Oh, nope, nope, that's nope. a medium heavy. This yeah. one's the lightest rod right here. Yeah, he's that's running right at me. Rod. That's yes. No, he's running at me. And you know, all those are lighter than mine. The only medium heavy big cat we have out is my spinning rod. There we go. Oh, he slowed me right down. This is a feisty one. Smaller, but. That fooled me. Oh, yeah. it's still a big Little fish. Ball. Yeah. Look at that. Six pounds, maybe seven. It is a good fish. Wow, this is crazy. The action we're seeing right now. Oh, no, no, no. Nice I don't fish want right a here. In my neck. They're netting the pike, which will be the first pike of the trip. Beautiful That's fish. That's a good pike. Dude, that is a good pike. Oh, oh, oh. There he comes. Cool. Oh, man, that was awesome. That was a quick release and he was gone. That was a crazy release. Wow, for a little guy, that felt, I don't know what that was, that felt like a tank. Burn. They're just racing as fast as they possibly can with that bait, like it's gonna get taken from them by somebody else. If you wanna find channel catfish in the springtime, what you wanna look for is warm, shallow water, um, mud flats, and look for flooded timber, or down trees, try to find that structure along the shoreline.
Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.